Hello everyone, thanks for stopping by today. We are sharing five tips for getting started with skills. So let's just jump right in. I'm Angela, I lead the community team here at CESA. I was a classroom teacher, just like many of you out there are, and you can connect with me on Twitter if you have additional questions. I'm really excited today to talk more about skills because I think as a Seesaw teacher, it's really easy to quickly get excited about all that Seesaw can offer, and I'm ready to share kind of the next step for you, those of you that haven't jumped into skills yet, because I think you're gonna love Seesaw even more. So here is our plan for today. I'm going to just introduce the skills feature briefly, and then we'll talk about five tips for getting started, and then we'll answer your questions live at the end. So be thinking as I'm going through some tips here what you might want to know a little bit more about. So let's just get started. One of the things I wanna let you know about, which is I'm, I'm really kind of quite excited about is that some of these updates to Seesaw are brand new as of today. So uh, we are live today here in, in the US on January 22nd. So make sure you have updated your Seesaw app if you're using you know, an iPad or a Kindle because then you're gonna see everything. It's also available on Chromebooks and the web at app.seesaw.me, but you don't need to do any updates there. So keep that in mind in case you're thinking, I've never seen that because some of it is brand new just today. So the first thing is we talk about introducing skills. So skills really is a feature that allows teachers to get real time insight into how students are progressing. And basically, as you are using Seesaw and your students are posting and you're collecting all of these great pieces of student work, it's really a great feature to be able to tag skills to those student posts because they're, sh they're showing you a lot of what they know. So when we talk about skills, that is something that is a paid feature and it's actually part of Seesaw Plus and Seesaw for School. So you see on the screen here, the three different levels of Seesaw. And I wanna let you know that if you are using free Seesaw, that's awesome and completely amazing, but you can do a free trial of Seesaw Plus, which will get you access to the paid skills feature. So that's what I'm gonna show you really quickly here because I want you to be able to play around with it as well if you're not yet using Seesaw Plus or Seesaw for Schools. So if you are using free Seesaw, here's how you start your trial of Seesaw Plus, which includes skills. So when you're signed into Seesaw, you just tap on that click on that skills tab, and then you're gonna see, I've, I've taken these screenshots because I don't know if you're like me, but I always get a little bit nervous when people are like, free trial, I think to myself, what am I signing up for? Is this really not free? Is it gonna go on forever? Am I gonna get myself into some weird situation? So I've taken these screenshots because I just wanna reassure you that when you go through the four steps that I'm showing here, there is no, there are no I got you moments. Um, basically, after 60 days, if you know you don't want to use skills, you don't have to use skills. You get all of your student work stays there and everything. So I just want to show you this quickly. It's really, truly an opportunity for you to play around with it. So um, again, you're just going to click skills and then get skills, and then you'll see um, these basically next two screens here. You can see all the CSAP Plus features in step three, and then just click the start the 60 day free trial if you don't yet have these available to you. So I wanted to show you that quickly so you wouldn't be nervous if you wanna just jump in there and try things out. But let's get going into our five tips. So number one is you can choose your rating scale and color. So basically what that means is when students are are adding work to Seesaw, you can tag it with skills, but you can determine what that rating scale is for you know, whatever system works best for you in your classroom. So really at this point, skills really suit a wide range of scales and teacher assessment styles, and we support up to six stars for the rating scale. So you can choose if it, you want it to be three, four, five, or six, and these are available in your class settings, and I'm actually gonna demonstrate this after I show you kind of the next 
um, tip as well. And if you're using Seesaw for schools, your, your admin can actually set the scale for the entire school as well. It really just makes it easier to organize that student work and view their progress in real time, which is, we love that, right? We love saving time and being able to see it quite easily. The other thing you can do when you're using skills is you can customize the grid color. So basically, if you know if you're giving a student one star, it would it could be you know the color that's denoted here with the one, and you can give a student up to depending on what you have. The range here is up to five stars, so you can choose the color that speaks to you, right? So they're easy to read. Their progress is color coded and you're able to choose this color on the web only. So that means only from app.seesaw.me, you can choose the color, but it shows up on every single platform. So keep that in mind as well. So what I'm actually going to do, because you know I like to show it, but then I really like to demo it so you know exactly what to do. So I'm here in a live Seesaw class that I use for professional development. So I'm signed in as a teacher and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you those two things that we just talked about. So I'm gonna click on the wrench in the upper right. And then when I'm in my class settings, I'm going to scroll down here to this skills section. And you'll notice if when you start your Seesaw class, it's, it's defaulted to four stars as the rating scale. But you might think, you know, I we really do a lot of things, a lot of reporting, um, progress, you know, monitoring progress with five on a five star scale. So I'm going to change that. OK, so I've, cho I've chosen the scale that I want to use for all of my skills that I'm going to be using in my class. And now I can also change this color scheme. So as you can see, you can choose whichever one works best for you. We also have some gradient options here as well, if that's something that works for you. But I think I'm just going to keep with this one at the top. So we've got that going. So that's pretty easy, right? So the next tip I'm going to show you is how do we actually add a skill? So tip number two, how do you start and add a skill? So if, like I said, if you're brand new to using the skills feature, I would just start really simple. So here you'll see how you actually add a skill and you'll get, you'll get these slides um, if you registered for this webinar. But again, I like to show you how to do this live. So I'm going to go back into our Seesaw class. Just a thing to note too, one nice feature is that whenever you add skills, they stay on your Seesaw account. So that means from year to year, those skills will still be there and from class to class. So basically if you, you know, maybe you teach middle school or high school and have multiple different classes and sessions, or maybe you're a specialist at an elementary school, that's really gonna come in handy when you're using them across classes. So here I am in my Seesaw class. I'm gonna click on the Skills tab here. And at the bottom, you'll see my Skills grid here on the left. I'm not gonna talk about that yet. But on the bottom, you'll see this button that says, you know, there's a little plus sign in Skills. So I'm gonna click right there right now. And let's create a new skill. So it can be, it can be an academic skill, it can be a social emotional skill, it can be a leader, you know, things to do with leadership, it could be a state standard, whatever you want to create. So I am going to say, um, we will do, we'll say reading fluency, okay? And this quick code you can use if you are using a state standard and there's a shortened code for it, um, you might want to put that there because it could help you in other reporting systems that you might need to use, or you could leave that blank. But you have to choose to have a name or a quick code. Then you can choose the grade level. This is a third grade class, so I'll leave that here. Um, I'm going to say the subject is reading. The category is, oh my goodness, I guess fluency, right? And then I could add a description. So these are all optional, the subject category and description. But you might find as you get started that you want to add as much as possible because down the road, I'm going to show you how you can sort by subject um, and category and things like that. So that might come in handy. So I'm just adding one skill. So I'm going to tap the green check. 
And it's basically saving that skill to all of the skills that I kind of have in my bank of skills, okay? So I wanna show you also this right here. When I have this, when I just added that, I should have showed you the total, I guess, before. So it says I have 13 total skills available in my class that, I've, that I have added. Now, some of you might be thinking, um, Angela, what? I don't understand because there's only five columns here on the left. Why aren't all 13 skills showing there? So keep in mind, they're only going to show in the skills grid once you have tagged a student post with the skill. So no need to panic if you've added you know, tons of skills to your class. They're only going to show up if something has been tagged with that skill here in the skills grid. So keep that in mind, but that's kind of a nice handy total that we have available at this point. Okay, so again, and I think start really simple. So if you're getting really excited to be starting and exploring with skills, maybe just add one skill and you know have your students post to Seesaw, share to Seesaw, and then you can practice tagging and adding that specific skill. Now, this is really great. So tip number three is save yourself a little bit of time and tag skills to activities and student posts. What's great about this is it's going to save you a lot of clicks in terms of if you already have an activity that you're sharing with students tagged with the skill, you're going to be able to quickly add star ratings as their work comes into you. So again, I like to demonstrate this, so let's, let's show you what this looks like. So the first thing I wanna demonstrate is if I'm going to share an activity with my class. So I'm gonna tap onto this green add button and I'm going to choose create or share activity because I already have something picked out and it's this fraction activity. So it's kind of just a quick check-in with my students. So I'm gonna choose share and I'm gonna share it with the class I'm currently in which is the third grade rock stars class. But here to the right, you're gonna notice it says edit students, folders, and skills. I'm gonna click right here because I want to then click on the tab skills because I wanna tag this skill equivalent fractions. When I do that, that means when students are responding to this activity and I'm approving their posts, I can just super quickly give them their rating as I'm approving, which is a huge time saver. So I'm not going back, you know, and adding the skill to individual posts. It's it's awesome. So I've chosen that. I could tag up to 10 different skills to this activity if, if I wanted to. If you're doing lots of, you know, cross-curricular activities, this is going to be great for you. So I'm going to tap that green check, and then I'm going to choose share with one class. I'm gonna go back to the class right now because you'll see that I've shared this activity. So it's showing up right there. But for the sake of saving some time today, I actually had some students already respond to this activity previously because I wanna show you what it looks like when you are reviewing their, their work and how you can actually rate the skills as they are, rate um, the posts as they're coming in here. So what I'm gonna do is what's great is when I click on that view, I can see all of, um, all of the things that are waiting for me or things that I don't have responses for yet. But I'm actually gonna get out of this for a second because I'm gonna show another view that might be more common to you would be the journal view. So just like normal, you might have this big huge red bar at the bottom the saying you have student um, post to review. So I'm going to tap review right here. And what I love is now I can I can look at the student work and I can quickly decide if I'm going to get one, two, three, four, five stars, totally up to you. And you see as I was clicking, the colors change. So let's say I'm going to give this student four stars. Um, I'm, I've got this next one to look at. I'm going to say three stars. And of course, I'm going very quickly. You'll, you'll be more thoughtful than I am at this point. Um, and then this is going to 
I'll be done. So I'm going to approve all of this. And what I love now is that when I go approve, approve, I'm approving those three posts. When I actually go then to the skills tab here on the right, I'm going to click skills and I'm going into the skills view, I can actually then see, you know, those ratings that I kind of just approved. And again, I've done this a few times, so there's more than I just showed there. But for example, here we have Allie. And under the skill equivalent fractions, I see a two. That two lets me know there are actually two pieces of work that have been tagged with this skill. The color yellow lets me know that's the last rating that was provided for this skill. So for example, when I go into here, it's great because the posts are then organized by that skill, okay? So it's great to see progress over time for students as well. So again, the yellow means that the last rating was three stars in the, in the color coding that I chose. Previously, when this work was submitted in a previous post, she had received four stars. So again, the color showing in the skills grid is going to be the latest. And again, if I go down here to Angela with the same skill, I see a three. So again, that's telling me there are three posts tagged with that skill. And the last rating is kind of this lighter green color. Okay, so that's four stars. So again, I can scroll and see all of the posts that have been tagged with that skill, which is super handy as well. Okay, so I wanted to show you that. The other thing I wanna show you is, you saw how I could tag a skill, take an activity with a skill, but let's say that students are sharing to Seesaw and you didn't have an opportunity yet to tag a skill. If you are in the journal view, like I am right now, you'll see this graduation cap under the student post. If I tap that, I can then easily add a skill, tag a skill to that post and then give it a rating. So this one um, is more related to the design process. So I'm gonna choose that. And I'm gonna right there give the rating. I'm gonna give five stars for that and tap the check and you'll see now that it has a little one next to this graduation cap that means one skill has been has been you know tagged and added to this student response okay so that's another way that you can add skills to student work so keep that in mind wait we have so many tips here to keep ch chatting through tip number four is that you are able to filter skills by student, skill, and more. So I love this. This is gonna blow your mind a little bit. So I'm back in my class again. I'm gonna go to skills. And again, we have seen this skills grid here on the left, but let's talk a little bit more about it. So I am in a class and I have, you know, what do we have? We have six students here in this demo class. So if I want to, I can go here to skills and I can say, you know, I actually only want to see how my whole class is doing with equivalent fractions. So I can tap that and then I have a really quick visual of how my students are doing, kind of what is their latest um, star rating related to this skill. So how do you use this? Oh my goodness, I use this all the time for small group instruction, right? If I wanted a quick insight, I'm thinking, Oh boy, okay, I need, I'm gonna pull Allie and Meryl. We're gonna do another little mini lesson on equivalent fractions. Here we go. Oh, my high flyers are Suvi and Wilson. I think, you know, I'm gonna give this to them next. So again, it's a quick way to visually kind of check in where, where students are currently at. And again, um, you can even dig deeper to kind of see the progress they have made. The other thing that I like to show here is I can also filter by student. So if I click on student and I'm saying, oh, let's see how Mila is doing, right? So I can see how Mila is doing related to all of the skills that have been tagged to her work, okay? And again, these numbers mean how many posts have been tagged with that um, skill. So keep that in mind. I can also filter by subject, okay? So if I only wanna look at math, we can just see what's going on with math in my class. 
category is the same same thing. So if you add that when you are creating a skill, that might come in handy for you when you want to filter. Okay. One thing to keep in mind that I didn't mention yet, if you're just getting started with skills, skills are only visible to teachers. They are not visible to families and they are not visible to students yet at this time. So what that means is anything you are viewing in the skills view is private to you, the teacher or any co-teacher on the class. So this is obviously something that you could easily share with a family if they're in for you know a face-to-face -face conference. I could easily say, oh gosh, I'm having a conference with Suvi's family. Let's just quick pull up skills and see how you know she's doing across all the skills that we're working on. Or maybe we only want to focus on um, math. So I'm going to filter down to math. Of course, I wouldn't show other students if I was just talking with one family. So keep that in mind as well. Okay, next. Next tip, tip number five is if you are using Seesaw for schools, you can actually add skills in bulk. Now that is something that your admin would do, but boy, that is super handy. So if your admin adds skills in bulk, all of the teachers in the school have the availability to get those skills that are tagged with their grade level. And we have lots of templates that are ready for you. So if you are an admin using Seesaw for Schools on our help center, we have lots of templates that we've already created based on, you know, all sorts of skills that you might be interested in exploring. If you're not a Seesaw for Schools school and you're thinking, oh my goodness, I would love to get my hands on, you know, these Seesaw soft skills template. You can still go and, you know, copy and paste as you're building individual skills, but you can't do a bulk upload. So keep that in mind as well. So I have buzzed through five tips. I'm sure there's all sorts of things I may have forgotten to show you or talk about, but I'm going to pause here and take some time to answer questions live.